And that brings us to financial resources, is how are you going to get this startup off the ground? If you're doing a web, mobile, or cloud app, it's actually quite possible that you could get the company started with your credit cards, friends and family, crowdfunding like Kickstarter, local angels, that is, uh, investors who are not professional venture capitalists but might make some small investments. Again, if all you need is a laptop, an Amazon Web Services account, you could be off and running developing an app. But just keep in mind that when you actually do the financial calculations, that might be great to actually code the app. But how are you going to create customer relationships and get, keep, and grow your business? And so financial resources actually gets you back to thinking about all the demand creation activities and customer relationships and the cost of your channel as well. So while you could get started here, it's interesting to start pre-computing what other amounts of capital I will need later on in the life cycle of my company. If you have something in a physical channel or something in the enterprise that requires millions of dollars uh, to start, you're more than likely to approach venture capital firms or corporate partners. So not only can you get money from corporate partners, but in the United States, there's some government financing that's available that, uh, particularly if you're coming from a university, the first place I would look is for what are called SBIR or STTR grants, uh, and they could be as large as half a million dollars to commercialize your company or your technology. Also, the Small Business Administration in the United States offers grants to small businesses to start their companies. In your country, there might be the equivalent uh, government funding. Now, once your startup is up and running and you're generating orders and revenue, there are some other alternatives. So, for example, you might be able to go to a bank and have them finance the lease of expensive physical equipment. If you're buying tons of computers or vehicles or manufacturing equipment, you might actually be able to get what's called a lease line so you don't have to pay cash for them. The second is, if you actually have purchase orders from customers, but these customers don't pay for an extended period of time, 60, 90, 180 days, you could actually take those confirmed purchase orders to people called factors. And factors make a business out of kind of um, lending you money on that purchase order at a discount. And so if you need cash, factoring is a normal part of financing in certain industries and segments. And then finally, if you're buying expensive components, typically hardware, in building your system, the vendor clearly wants to sell that equipment to you, but you might not have that cash up front, or cash is more important than your mother right now in your startup, and so you're trying to conserve it. You sometimes can actually get the vendor to finance or defer or loan you the money to buy their own uh, equipment. And that's another way to kind of preserve your financial resources.